Cook here. Footy's back. G'day. I'm Mark McClure. Wait, no, I'm not. Carlton Legends. That guy actually... has no idea who Mark McClure I know, is. I know who Mark McClure is. You, you gave me the look Carlton. like, ah. No, no, no. I was just laughing because I was thinking of Troy McClure. Uh, <laughs> you hello. may remember me from such things, eh? Yeah. I'm Troy McClure. You <laughs> might remember me from podcasts such as NBA Australia. But also, oh, yeah. I'm actually just James Clements. This is the AFL Today Show, your new favourite one-stop shop for all things footy. Joining me, as per usual on a Sunday night, a couple of weird footy nuffs. Some might call them, I don't know, local weirdos, AFL experts, if you really want to stretch the definition of experts. It's Alex Donnelly over there. I don't know how to feel, Jim. This is, this is different for me this week. Boo-hoo. You finally lost a game that wasn't to Richmond. Well yeah. Done. yeah, that actually makes me feel a little bit better. It's like, oh, okay, we lost to a team that's To be decent. honest, it's, it would have been one funny. of the greatest trivia questions of all time. Who, of like, Sydney, one of the greatest teams in the history of the Aussie rules Apparently, footy, yeah. simply... If they had gone through the uh, entire season, like 22 and 22 one. And, one. and so who do they lose to? Is oh, geez, probably somebody good like Collingwood. Like, no, Imagine the second was worst Richmond. team, yeah. Richmond. Boom. Yeah. Anyway, in the middle over here is Stats Boy, Liam McKellen. I'm actually excited that I'm not the only team that lost this week. So we got we got that to uh, celebrate as a North fan. <laughs> I am wearing a brand new Mitchell and Ness oh, Carlton nice. uh, top as well. Yeah. Feeling pretty good about this because the Blues got a really win. comfy. It was pretty handy. Uh, anyway, this is the AFL Today Show. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, of course. Get around all the socials, all the good stuff. The thing is, footy is back. This is the round 16 rap show. You know what round 16 means? We have one third of the season left. That is oh, it. Oh, that's sad. Shush. I hate reminding myself. I don't need you to pile on <laughs> you, stats, I boys. Say, I'll agree with you. <laughs> stats boys like, you started this, <laughs> yeah, you start, You're the host. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I hate the idea that we're two thirds of the way through the AFL season. So, oh, but we, get a, we get a month of finals. Yeah. yeah. But there's not that much footy during finals. Yeah, there's four, two, two, one. It sucks. There's, there's nine games. So I'm, it's one round of footy. 100% of the time, I'm just like, Homer, footy, donut machine. Footy, footy, footy. Let's go. Give me the footy, 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 footy. By the time we have like, you know what, what, less than, we've got six weeks essentially left. Yeah. You're breaking my heart. We here. roll into the W though. We can't so. be sad though. Like there's still six weeks. Let's just, let's just get into it. I feel like you're basically <laughs> like a uh, middle-aged, like, I don't know, couples, like, you know, house. There we go. In Montauk, like you know, live life, love, or live, <laughs> oh, live no, life, that's love, stuff. or something. Like, it's like you got to appreciate what's going on now, Jim. I know that's yeah. all my entire <laughs> thing. That's what I'm all about. This is why I shine a light uh, on how far we are because you got to appreciate it while you've got it. Yes. <laughs> right. Quick look for round sixteen. Upsets galore. Mm. If only one of the teams in the top four was any good. Oh, that's right, Carlton. <laughs> hey. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. I love that. Uh, so what do we have? We had Sydney lose. We had the... Essendon got beaten. Essendon we'll Bombers lose. We also saw the Pies lose. Uh, I spent most of my weekend explaining the 28th parallel. Yes. Uh, I yep. call it now the parallel X, parallel -X uh, effect. There we go. I'll work my way around that. Parallel <laughs> I he said parallel -X. Yeah, parallel -X. Para -X. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there we effect. go. Effect. Yeah. It is... Undefeated. It's going to be severely tested this weekend coming. North, hey, we're going to we're going to beat him. North might be up and about. He's this confident. I, I can't wait to get to Thursday. I'm not even confident in North. I'm just confident in the 28th. Ah, program. it's confident in the theory. Yes. Yeah, you got to be it's a science. Got to be confident in the latitude. It's, anyway, like, we'll it's like desert theory stats, guys. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about <laughs> desert theory in the World Cup. Outside <laughs> of that, in terms of the results this week, like Hawthorne going out west and smashing them, Adelaide showing a bit of heart and beating JDI. But yeah. Port. Absolutely, oh, finally stepping up. No, 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 no. They, they, they didn't step up. Well, they fell across the line. Yeah, they, fell, they, across, they, they yeah. fell across the line in the who's worse off. Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't a win. Mm -hmm. But we had so many close games this weekend. Like, yeah. It was absolutely it was great. chaotic. Yeah. Quite literally, the ones that weren't close were Carlton Richmond today. And that was oh, and Hawks, last night. Hawks, 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 Hawks and West Coast then. Last Three night. out of the nine. Three out of the nine, pretty much. Yeah. Last night, Geelong Essendon. That was close for the vast majority of that game until they got dogged yeah. by the refs. We'll yeah. get to that in a second. <laughs> uh, what else? Stengel. He just signed, yeah. Eddie Betts was out there being very coy on Saturday night on Fox Footy going, <laughs> I don't know anything about this. <laughs> He's definitely signing. <laughs> uh, and then, boom, we uh, have the kind of news-ish that it's like looks like to be a three and a half mil Five-year deal to stay in Geelong. Yeah. Knocks and back extra money from yeah. St Kilda because who Why would you to want to go to St Kilda? Kilda? I think it was four and a half. It was an extra mil. Yeah, for an Kilda. extra year, though. But so. an extra year as well, yeah. It did bring up the simple fact of, like, there is a... Probably also got a piece of land thrown in. An idea, <laughs> Maybe, right? Cotton on franchise. The, uh, as Eddie Betts was trying to explain, it's like <clears throat> he's found a spot. 
This is a dude that anybody in the AFL could have had, and now there's a bidding war. Well, he, yeah, he got in a lot of trouble before. Exactly. Yeah. So he got in a lot of trouble. And I think he almost owes them yeah, a little exactly. bit. For the second chance. They literally gave him a second chance, yeah. And they threw a lot of resources at him. Yeah. They threw a lot of time. They, threw, Eddie, they literally hired Eddie Betts exactly. as an assistant coach to help him out. Yep. So that's a really cool story. Yep. I love that. Good job, Tyson Stengel. LDU reckons he wants to be a roofer life. Yes. Again, though. Again, you got to do this weird. stupid joke, yeah. I think he's a man, yeah. <laughs> not a kangaroo. I'd rather be a man than a kangaroo. But I, I, just me, just saying. I'd yeah. rather be a kangaroo. That'd be pretty cool. You're weird. Yeah, yeah you Don't are. Do that. I am, yeah. You're, you're, you are very small. Yeah. So I guess it's like, I'm bigger now that I'm a kangaroo. Is voice. he a, a I wallaby? Oh, rock wallaby. Yeah. One of those weird looking dudes. She's <laughs> like, what is that? It's like, Ugh. And he's like, Ugh, I never know. Like <laughs> classic rock wallaby jokes here on AFL today. But it's also, he's like, yeah, we need to show something or I might leave. We how are we talking about okay. how do you resign lads? That's all I'm excited about. But he might leave still because he's like, uh, yeah, you kind of need to show something here, boys. Ah, he's staying. He Back said to he was looking ruse. I remember turning, <laughs> <laughs> turning a corner, driving out of lawn, <laughs> out the back way uh, to Dean's Marsh, and like it was wet. It was like night ish, and you're like, yeah, this is not a great time to be driving. I'll no, take it a bit slow. Yeah, and yeah. usually I sort of fang through there because I know it really well. I'm like basically BT at this point. I just don't have like you know. <laughs> A sick weird underground bunker that's all solar powered like him. Uh, but literally, we had two different times where it's like, look at that weird wallaby just eyeballing us from the uh, side. Yeah, they liked all that. What are you doing? Yeah. I'm, like, I'm driving. What are you doing? <laughs> and then the next time, he's like, what is that guy? He's like, battle scarred. is like a war room, a war wallaby Whereas or something. I had one that's like, I want to go to the afterlife and I'm using your vehicle as a vessel. Yeah, they like, and I'd slow down, still jumped in front of me, kabam, oh. and my car. First week I was living in Victoria. It was a go. real good introduction. This feels Jeez. like a good metaphor for the actual Australian rugby team. So, <laughs> yeah, yes. the Wallabies. Yes. There you go. <laughs> anyway, uh, and finally, we had a very emotional Ken Hinckley after the game today, which is kind of nice. I was happy for him, yeah. a giant surprise. Yep. Mm. It's also one of those things like, if you're Port, how much do you really want them to like, show more as the season goes on. Wow, well, we'll keep Ken around because the boys responded. Yeah. So it keeps happening each year. Yeah. What are we doing like, at this point? They, they're they probably going to finish, what, seventh or eighth again? Well, we don't Maybe know. Go out. They could lose next week. Or they could go on a crazy run, but then still, still go out in straight sets in finals. Who knows? Who knows? It's the best part. I feel like it's they need to make a prelim for him to keep his job. I think they need yeah. to make a grand final for him to make his job. <laughs> no, well, they're not keep doing him. that. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Should we do it? Yep. Are we time for the round 16? Ladder check, check, check. Not much actually kind of like really changed at the very, very top because despite Sydney losing, they've built an incredible, incredible lead yeah, as the best team in Aussie rules footy for the last 150 years. It's except this weekend, yeah. 13 and 2. They came up short, whatever. They're still smashing it. 13 and 2. is still ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. that helps. Yep. Yep. Carlton, big win over Richmond. They're 11 and 4. You love that in second. As a Carlton supporter, this might not surprise you, but I was pretty stoked with that because with Essendon, Essendon and Collingwood both losing, we have a very different looking top yes. four. Yes. Yep. But it also leaves Carlton six points ahead in second, which is awesome, despite so being the gap. What is it? Eight to, eight points behind yeah, the Swans. Yeah. So the so gap yes. to third from the Swans is fourteen points. That's crazy. That's insane. So the top, I think the top, yeah, the top two is already locked. Top two it's looks locked. Eh, Carlton I think, have I think a so. pretty squeezy schedule the rest Swan, of the way. There's a couple of yeah. qu- couple of squirrely ones there, but Swan should win their next three, but their last month is like the murderers, right? It's like this gets you ready for finals. Okay. Like Collingwood, Essendon, um, I think Port Adelaide's in there. So it's yep. like and Brisbane. So big run home. I think nice. that's the biggest point, right? So one and two at least have the leg up. That's all yes. you need yes. because three through twelve yep. are separated no, by 13, how much? Thirteenth. Oh, yeah, we are, we've got Hawks now. Yes. Three through yes. 13. Yeah. What are they separated by? Six. Six, Six points. Total points. That's crazy. And this the percentages is... is like nothing. I think it's like 13%. Like uh, Brisbane and the Western Bulldogs clear ahead of everyone else. But Freo on 111. Yeah, it is about 13%. And yeah. Hawthorne on 97. It's awesome. Yeah, awesome. It's, there's not much in between there. It's like 14%. It's it ridiculous. is absolutely absurd. Now you have Freo in third after a big win over the Swans, which is crazy considering how at the start of this year we're just like, are they going to win into these close games? We didn't know, yeah. And all they've done is win the last couple of close games. Mm. And they've got Richmond coming up this week. Essendon play a massive return Classic game Essendon. against Collingwood this week after doing an Essendon. Yep. What are you doing over there, Essendon? Oh, we're doing an Essendon. <laughs> we're What's that? Are we building up everyone's hopes and dreams? Yep. Yes. What are you going to do with them? <laughs> Dash them quite expertly. Yes. That's a classic Just like South movie. Africa in the World Cup. Nobody yes. has ever seen this coming. <laughs> the fact is they're 9 5 and 1. They have a percentage that's 99. It, and, the, or the, yeah, you don't and have to worry about the three of their last four. Yeah. 
I love that. With the draw, the handy draw, though. Same thing as is, Brown. they're still the best team in the AFL, <laughs> San Sydney. <coughs> Geelong, a fifth at 36 points because they don't have a draw. There is an incredible bit there between three, four, and six. They all have, there's, and eight. There's four draws. draws. Yeah, it's five incredible. draws. It's incredible. So Geelong are like, can we get a draw? Like, <laughs> we just need a draw basically to help us out here. They're nine and six and they're fifth at 36 <laughs> points, equal with Collingwood and Port. That's uh, crazy. Collingwood are eight, five, and two. Port are nine and six. Of those teams, you're like, who's playing? Like Geelong, Geelong are okay now, maybe? I think, they'll be, I think they'll be good. Collingwood, can they win away? Who knows? <laughs> Port, they got to win just <laughs> against just, a horrible yeah, security yeah. team. And then there's the rampant Brisbane Lions. That wasn't coming. rampant on Friday night. No, it wasn't actually. Yeah. <laughs> that was, we'll that was tongue that, in cheek. Yeah. You would yeah. give me that? There was yeah. tongue in cheek. Right, They're right. rampant. By the falling over the line against a horrible, horrible team. No, Alex Neil Bullen was the one falling over the line. <laughs> uh, Western Bulldogs are on 32, the line of demarcation. This feels so right right now. It is. They Quite literally, they're the line yeah. of demarcation. If you are better than Western Bulldogs, you're in the top eight. Oh, they quite won. literally. Well, but we, they are the best of the eight and seven teams, which is just so funny. They won there two are, in a row as well, so which is yeah, they beat North, funny. Finally, finally won two in a row. But there are five, eight, and seven teams. Yeah. There goes the Dogs, the Giants, the Suns, the Melbourne, and now your <laughs> beloved Hawthorne Hawks. I suppose you said smoked, the Melbourne. Smoked the Eagles in the uh, Bird Bowl. Yep. The Crows are five nine and one after a big win over the Giants. The Saints are sitting pretty in fifteenth. I I feel like the Saints pretty. basically should just be like the fifteenth spot on the AFL ladder is just out. Just it's yes, there. So year on year, if we go above, year. that's a win. If yeah. we go below, oh, just stats guy figured it out. St Kilda or Crystal Palace. They are. They are. The Crystal very Palace. mediocre. Right. Make make a good and run. Then, and then they'll have a good run, and then someone will be like, "Hey, that that dude that you really like, we're going to take. We're going to take him. Some yeah. good club just goes, thank you. No, not wrong. Yes, very relatable. Uh, the West Coast Eagles. <laughs> it's going to be a uh, three talk. and twelve. <laughs> Breaking my heart here, Gerald. They're three and twelve. We can't play the drop anymore. Did it? Did it? Did it? Anyway, two and thirteen. Richmond. One and fourteen. North Melbourne. But it is absolutely remarkable that between three and thirteen, we have. As mentioned, six total points splitting Fremantle, Essendon, Geelong, Collingwood, Port, Brisbane, West Bulldogs, Giants, Suns, Melbourne, and the Hawks. I put it to you, gentlemen. Yes. <clears throat> Who actually makes this eight out of that, as we call it here on the AFL Today Show, the morass. Morass, morass, morass. I'm a truther. Ooh. Gold Coast. Gold Coast oh, make it. Nah. That, that, win, They'll that, lose away. that win on Saturday is massive because that means if they can beat... North Melbourne and West Coast away, that gets them to 10, and I think they've got another three or four home games. So they theoretically 13 to 14 wins. I reckon that gets you into the finals. If they I'll, beat North this week away, then they're, yeah, they're a huge are chance. Boys, but yeah. I don't think they will. I'm, I'm staying with the eight currently. All right. Mate, it'll definitely change order, but no, I, don't, I don't think. I worry about Port. I worry about Port and Geelong. Yeah, I, think, I, I still think they're better the than Western Bulldogs. The Western Bulldogs are Gold somehow Coast. not going to make it, and it's going to feel so right, despite them potentially deserving to be there. Mm. They just don't. But GWS, like, I've got no confidence in. Melbourne are cooked. Hawthorne, I got no. I would love Hawthorne. Hawthorne to make it because it's the, the very young team. But that's yeah, they don't yeah. have a chance now. Their percentage. Oh, they've actually caught up a little bit on percentage. Doesn't matter about the percentage now. It's mm. just like keep winning games. That they don't need to worry about percentage. Just keep winning. Yep. Nice one. Well, three through thirteen is jam packed. Let's quickly go to Ben Sash. Yeah, this sucked. Hey, so what's going on with the umpires? Oh, look. They did change their minds. It's around 16. We complain about this a lot. I hate complaining about the umpires, but <laughs> if you were like showing somebody who didn't watch Aussie Rules footy a game in round four and the you umpire, showed them a yeah. game in round eight, round 12 and round 16, they'd be like, <laughs> what? it wasn't that a thing like four weeks ago and then yeah. four weeks before that it wasn't a thing, but four weeks before that it was it was a thing. Or you could even go back to last year. You got at the end of last year, they were like, "All right, we're going to do all these things." Then the, you change change it completely the next season. It's so weird. The so weird. intentional <laughs> points has been a point of contention. Uh, running it over the, the point line, basically yep. for rush behind. I was, behind. I was, I was fine with go. that one. Yeah, I was uh, in the rules. Apparently, it was okay that that one, but it, it was. But we have had yeah. some where it's like within the nine meter rule. Yeah. Right? Okay. Well, Tom McCartan got pinned last week for what are we doing here? a less egregious offence. But then there was one in the Port Adelaide St Kilda game today that should have been paid that mm. wasn't paid. But that, it's not that. It's the the holding the ball interpretation. And then I actually, because I went to Geelong and Essendon last night, um, 
There's a lot of bad calls. But but also because I don't have like I didn't have anything going in the game. I was watching the umpire's positioning. I thought he was also about to say, I've got nothing else going in my life. So I'm just there on a Saturday. <laughs> just, yeah. uh-huh. Well, partner goes for Geelong. Um, so she was very happy. But the umpire's positioning, you'd think with four umpires, you'd have one on one side of the mm. ground, another on the other side of the ground, looking at, you know, the scrimmage uh, for any incorrect disposal if they have got a handball away. They're all just standing on one side. And then, it's, I didn't even and then it's sometimes it, maybe it's the guy that's 100 metres away from the player that's on the, the other side of the contest. Like, you, you can't see anything. I can't see anything. That's yeah. it, though. There's four dudes. Get it right. Surely because what we're, get it right with four. The yeah. thing is, you got four. It doesn't really even matter. It's like, where are they standing? How are they just completely screwed this up? Because holding the ball at the moment is screwed. I, Descent is screwed. Descent, you're allowed to yell Not the giving the again. ball back yeah. to the umpire is apparently 51 week. And, and then, then it's not 50 in other week. Oh. North Melbourne are like, what the Come hell, on. man? There was, a free, there was a free kick paid against Jordan Sweet today for that because he didn't hand it straight back but to they, the umpire. Last night, the game they didn't even do that for the games last night. Exactly. It was raining. It doesn't matter. It's literally it <laughs> almost a day-by-day, game-by-day, yeah. game-by-game it- difference. And I'm like, this, all we ask for, I think, is fans. And I think the biggest thing for Essendon and Geelong fans watching that game, because there were calls that went against Geelong as well. I think so, They yeah. were very squirrely. Essendon fans are just irate because a bunch of their stuff went completely sideways. It was, goals, it was goals, almost a riot. Yeah. And it is hilarious because, I don't know, karma sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> Sam Draper. Yeah. Hey, diving on a ball. Remember when I did that? It was really funny. We won the game. Sucked in, I morons. Agree. Don't have to tell you, the football gods like, hey, remember that from about Get two months it. ago? Ah, uh, was... just up here. Tapa, tapa, Speak, tapa. Speaking of football gods, my mate who goes faster than last night sitting next to him, Zach Merritt had just done something awesome. He was like, Zach Merritt could win a brown low. Three seconds later, he got the ball, kicked it out in the full. Like, That's the footy gods telling <laughs> you you're wrong. You're not allowed to. If you <laughs> but get, I think, kick it out in the full with a G, yeah. you're not allowed to. After so many games over the weekend, like we're back to having nine games in a round, and it really does put the spotlight back on the umpiring of like, how can it be this inconsistent? Very different, yeah, yeah. Across the round, I, from game to game to game, from day to day. Yeah, yeah. I nearly put my ridiculous. foot through the TV watching this Swans game yesterday. There was a dangerous tackle when 110 kilo Josh Tracy runs straight through Dane Rampey at full pace, yeah. and Rampey's just like, I'm just going to hold on and hope, <laughs> and let go, and Tracy's ended up on the ground. like, no, nah, dangerous tackle. It's like... That's not how it works. He yeah. just got smashed. Yeah, it's part of the game. <laughs> All right, second part of event sesh. Are you trolling us, AFL? Ugh. Are you trolling us? Alex I feel like you're trolling us. us. Hey, what happened on Saturday at 1.30? Uh, so I was on the couch watching the Swans play Fremantle. Cool. And I was, at, I was at the watching? pub watching North. Yeah. There you go. After yeah. footy. So, yeah. you North would, play. so you wouldn't have been watching Swans. No, I know. And you would not have been watching North. Who? Why was that? Because they're <laughs> on at the same time. So dumb. So dumb. What did you do later that night? That's on Saturday night. Just hanging out. You're on the couch. You're like me. You've got a few tins in you. Off you go. You're feeling pretty nice. I was nice. at the MCG. Like, I better watch this Geelong and Essendon yes. game. What am I not going to be able to watch? Oh, that's right. The other game on at the same <laughs> time. What are we doing? The exact Say, so, oh, it's half time. Maybe I'll go check. It's only half time in the other one. What are we doing? What am I meant to do? Actually, Talk yeah. to my wife? <laughs> are you nuts, Andrew Gillen Dillon? She hates me. Why, like, what are we doing? She doesn't want to hear what I've got to say. The tender. dog's just on in his corner. The kids are in bed. I'm just sitting there going, all right, I'm just going to sit here silently. <laughs> this is stupid. What are you doing? At what point do you just look at this as an AFL exec to go, we've nailed this? Yeah, no one nailed it. Can, idiots, can we also point out today, so I watched all of Port Adelaide and St Kilda. Which would meant you would have missed yeah. the start of Carlton Richmond. I missed the first Which also fifth, meant I, that you've I, had a bad day. Really you would have missed <laughs> yeah, but, but I missed, the start of no. West Coast Hawthorne. So, no, I, watched, I, I got to see the second quarter of Richmond and Carlton. But then I'm like, oh, Jim will be watching Richmond and Carlton. I better watch West Coast and Hawthorne because okay. it started at 4.40. So today, all three games at one time overlap. So you couldn't so see dumb. the full of every game if yeah. you had to, if you needed to catch all three. Even As the I've one said, on, on Saturday night, like you said, about half time. You can, but they used to do it um, 20 minutes or something different. Can so we you also could watch point bugs, out yeah. that the other game last night was in Adelaide. There is a time difference. There's that, a time that difference. Game started, that, yeah. that game could have started at 8.10. Exactly. What are we doing? And then it's like, oh, that game's over. Like in the last quarter of the, you watch the, Geelong, last quarter over there. the, the Geelong game, it's like, ah, yeah. oh, it, they've just started halfway through the third quarter here. Oh, we can switch over. Or you can go to the bar at the MCG and be like, oh, this is great. You can have tins for an hour here. Nah, but it's cool. The AFL have got this completely under control. <laughs> it's definitely maximizing ratings. It's definitely helping all fans really appreciate it. Yeah. And this is the key point. I saw point 17 here. seconds of North Melbourne. This is the key point. That's like it. it. Because it's I like, turned what over at half time. Yeah, like fair, yeah. 17 seconds left. What have we talked about time and time again? <laughs> Footy is its own reward. 
footy, watching footy, doesn't matter what teams are playing, you should be trying to sell footy, not to that team's nah. fans. It's it should be going, in general, hey, yeah. guys, do you like footy? Yeah, because the, here's some footy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't, like, you shouldn't have to, like, But you could have played choose. Sydney it's and Frio uh, on Thursday night. Mm. It would have been great. Of course. Now we can do Monday footy as well. So. Well, Monday footy would have been Adelaide and GWS. Mm. Yep. Right. We we'll probably should get into some other stuff. That's a good vent session. <laughs> Let's fly through the game wraps. Game, game wraps. game wraps. Game wraps. Game wraps. Hey, remember Friday? No. no. Uh, <laughs> I was at the pub, so I really don't. Uh, <laughs> I was actually saying it's a pretty good band, something, something, Explosion, and that's their name. It's oh, not me I thought you were going to forget their name. It's like I've had 87 beers, I've forgotten their Stop name. Something, something, <laughs> Explosion. No, that's it. They're a very good band. Uh, yeah, nice. Other band, Loser, one of my favorite bands in Melbourne. Another really good blend. I think I'll call Bliss from Geelong and slash Melbourne. Really good stuff. Uh, one of my favorite venues in Melbourne, Shot Kickers. What? It rules. It's a nice. Simpsons joke. Oh. It's a split second Simpsons joke in one episode. Great that. venue for it. There Just saying. Cool. Either way, I was watching this on my phone. At the bar, like an absolute <laughs> legend, clearly. <laughs> Watching Brisbane fall over the line oh. against a horrible, horrible Melbourne team that completely gave up the ghost in the second half. They should have won. Again? Yeah. And here we are, 86-81. Take us through it, gentlemen. Well, Melbourne got to three-quarter time up. Yeah. That'll do, boys. Good effort. Good stuff, Simon. Thanks for that. Yeah, we're, we're just going to. Yeah. We're not going to kick a goal in the last quarter, but we're going to watch Brisbane do everything they can to not win the game and hope to God that we fall over the line somehow. Uh, Melbourne did come out with some intensity. Uh, Clayton Oliver was like, oh, well, I've got to do something now because Petrarca's not coming back. So yeah. he lifted. I thought he was really good. But they were plus 25 in contested possessions and they were laying tackles oh. and really sticking them. Well, they them. kicked away, right? Like it started yeah. off like Brisbane were feeling great. Charlie was Cameron was kicking goals. Ahead. They're like, we're was feeling awesome. Points, I think and then Melbourne yeah. just go, whoop, bang, in the second quarter and off they go. They're flying. And you're like, Cosy Pickett, what is five, happening? Five, yeah, that's Cozzy, it. That's it was the that, best game he's had, I reckon, in a couple of years. He was awesome. It, he, it was like, he's like, yep, this is. I'm going I'm to turn around, show, show us what we've got. You also had the worst physical confrontation ever when Bailey Fritch tried to get into Harris Andrews, and Harris Andrews like, hey, what, what, what are, are you, you doing, you little pip squeak? Yeah. yeah, it was just like pip squeak is the best word for that. He's like yeah. pip squeak, get out of here. Yeah, it was really <laughs> weird. Um, but it's the, the last quarters that are the most concerning oh thing here God. for Melbourne. So since round eleven. Melbourne, so we'll just, I'll quickly run through this. Melbourne, one one goal against West Coast, four. Mel, Melbourne, three goals against St Kilda's, four. They won that game. Melbourne, two goals against Fremantle's, four. Got belted. Melbourne, two goals against Collingwood's, three. Uh, they lost that game. Melbourne, not a point against North Melbourne. Yep. Fell over the line. Melbourne, four behinds to Brisbane's, three goals, six. Like Anyone's two, watching the game, Brisbane probably should have won that by 20 they points. They should have had a couple quarter. more goals. Yeah, and that's, So that's two weeks in a row they haven't even scored a goal in the last quarter. That yep. is... So that's fitness, eight goals, nineteen to twenty three fifty four <laughs> in their last six games. That just need Joel crazy. Smith to drop in the uh, rooms at halftime. Yeah, but this is this. Oh, that was deadly silence. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, Stats Boy's like Jim. Don't make those jokes. Yeah. Oh, I'm 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 uh, not talking about that. But you got to you got to help the boys. You dog, you just dog the boys. That's well, a, that's a good joke. Joel yeah. Smith yeah. dropping well, halftime. That's not a bad joke. But what's he going to do at halftime? Give them a bit energy. of energy. He's yeah. going to boost the boys up. Is, I don't know how. No, he's going to do it. You think it would work? Yeah, going to be great. So. <laughs> Will Ashcroft coming back. He looked like he had a Mr. Beat. That hair was flowing. He nearly kicked a goal with his first yeah, touch. Yeah, that would have been cool. He, he looked really good. He, lo he looked sharp. He, yeah. He'll keep getting better as the rest of the season continues, but I thought McCluggage was good, but Josh Lots Dunkley was phenomenal. Yeah. Dunkley was amazing all game. Yeah. Uh, Lockie Neal got going in the second half. He was pretty well held early. There was something to see from Melbourne, though, going, okay, there is something there with these kids. The young, uh, Rue was really good early. Rue, yeah. this was yeah. that game from Rui, like, hey, him. him. That, that's that full least, forward. Yeah. When he puts on another five kilos and has another 40 games under his belt, he's going to kick 60, They still need goals. someone else around him, yeah, yeah. which is the worry. Meanwhile, Brucey revealed. He was awesome. He Just rules. as well they didn't drop him for Shadow. Instead, of, they coast. gave up Shadow Brain. Well, yeah. Yeah. He was great in Supercoach. Uh, how are the two fan bases feeling after this? Melbourne, they're feeling as usual. It's yeah. like, what is going on with this team? Are we bad? They would have been so happy with the first three quarters oh, yeah. because they'd be like, all right, we're playing our brand. We're killing it in the midfield. We're killing it contested possessions. Doing everything right. And then they're just back to where they started in the last quarter. Yeah. It comes out of fitness. They look so slow the last two weeks, especially in the last quarter. Yeah. Uh, Brisbane, they're like, well, thank God we won yeah. that one. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. Gabatoire is back. Yeah. That's just we're one of those weird games because uh, weird things happen. But it's also Brisbane, Brisbane getting the... The demons, hey, hey, out of them <laughs> after that loss last year at the MCG. Yes, yes. Where, nice. they, uh, where they had the last five goals kicked against them. And the lights stayed on. Which is yep. that, that's but true. But the biggest thing is, like, that's a huge win for Brisbane to actually just pull it off because if they had not have won that, oh, it would have been cooked. absolutely well, Barry Crocker. They kicked 11 goals, 20. So Brisbane would oh. be 
thirteenth right now, and Ooh. Melbourne would be Melbourne would be somewhere in that fifth, sixth, seventh range yeah. in that thirty six point zone. Instead, they're thirteenth. Yeah, they're sucked in. That just shows how yeah, close it is. Yeah, yeah. Nice one. Saturday we had North Melbourne put up a bit of a fight against the Western Bulldogs. Yeah, I, I saw seventeen seconds. Fill me in, please. Sixty to seventy seven. <laughs> Take it away, stats man. Yeah, it was a bit of a strange game I wrote down here. The dogs were just calm and confident all the way through. They, they North got it back. I think it was thirty-eight points at one stage. Then North got got it back to a couple of goals, and everyone, the commentators were just trying to ride the North comeback. But then the dogs were like, "Oh, we'll just kick three more, and yeah, <laughs> and then we're, we're fine." So the bomb was awesome. Is it, if something happens to the bomb midweek? He's gonna have a good game apparently now. He had back spasms and he was they started him at full forward, then he was killing it at full forward. They're like So does Bevo just like yeah. take like a wood axe to him at some yeah. point on Wednesday and just go, Whoop bang! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How's your how's your like corky there, Bond? He's like, Oh, oh that's that hurts. bad. Yeah. It looks like a bit of play awesome yeah. on Saturday. It doesn't make any sense. It's like they're faking injuries midweek with uh, the Bond. He started at full forward, then he's like, had ten touches at full forward, they're like Oh, maybe he can play midfield. So they put him back in the midfield. 35 and he, touches and kicked yeah. three points. Yeah. It was just brutal. He, but, he was you know. so good. Uh, Tristan Sherry was awesome. I think he should be up there in one of the best ruckmen in the comp at the moment. He, he's going to win the like best and fairest. He saw, yeah, probably in the top, I'd say top four. He's beat, he was awesome. Just throwing guys around like he did. Who did he do that against? McCreary, was it? No. Yeah, it was, it was McCreary. Yeah. McCreary he, to did the that again. he did that again against nice. Bulldogs twice, just sending people. So that was good fun. The funny one was actually Rory Lobb. Luke Beveridge did a good they call. They sent him back. They sent him back. He got eight marks. Liam Jones was awesome as well and lucky, but the Sam Reed going back. and Tom McCartan theory. Yeah. You can't kick straight, go in a centre half. If you can't, yeah, yeah. If you're a good mark, go back and it, he did really well. Because so. they, because the thing is, they they can read the footy well and they can attack the mm. footy. Yeah. yeah, it's like you just can't kick goals. So yeah, I, as a North fan, if we're talking about the fan bases, yep. I'm happy that again another honourable loss. We, I, I, everyone, the commentators were even like, "Oh, this is going to get ugly." Thirty-eight points it, last year. That would have been a seventy-point margin. Yeah. I think. Like yeah. North couldn't kick anything. Like no. Suva yeah. was well held. He oh. didn't kick a goal. Zerha uh, was solid. Um, Paul Curtis was really good, but just not enough goalkeepers. And for the dogs, it's like, hey, we won two games yeah, in a row. Yeah, two games in a row. Little like, ripper, they win the flag. Good, but but it's like, we're still ninth. Yeah, still ninth, and they need to win those games more convincingly. To uh, oh, who final. cares? They won. That's the thing. This is remember they, they slipped up win. to West Coast yeah, last year. Two wins in a row. They won. Good. True. Hey, so pretty close game. Yeah. Another really close game. Very yep. close. Oh, the SCG fourteen no. fourteen Sydney to fifteen nine Frio ninety nine ninety eight. Mm. Fremantle Dockers, heave ho, way to go, blow it out your nose, Sydney, oh, there you go. Yeah, that, nice. Like, it was an amazing game. <laughs> it was, it was Really, awesome. really fun. Yeah. And it quite literally comes down to a Logan McDonald kick from, what, 55 out? And he's like, I'm on my way to Frio. Oh, I kicked it that way. What a surprise. <laughs> Sorry, boys. It was a hard kick. It was like, yeah, 55. Yeah. That what happened to you? Sydney is the greatest team and they're never going to lose again. They are. We still are. <laughs> well, they're not going to lose again, lost. Sats boy. Yeah, yeah, we're still first. Uh, <laughs> Josh Draper, side note, he's getting the rising sun on this week. What the hell? Where did that come from? I know. He that was, awesome. was amazing. At fullback, he kept them in the game mm. late, won a bunch of one-on-one -on -one contests, took a stack of marks, but in the last quarter, he was phenomenal. Nat Fife, who got <laughs> out by Heaney in the reverse fixture, was like, hey, hey, I'm still pretty good. Uh, tagged Heaney out of the yeah. game, but you could actually see him at times when he was like, when Heaney was there and he's like, footy, footy, <laughs> Heaney, ah! He didn't know what to do, but he actually, he was fantastic was with 20-odd touches. Hey, he's like the footy pie guy. Footy yeah. pie, footy, <laughs> yeah. footy, footy, five. Footy five. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Yeah. Footy five. I'm, I'm five. I'm going to get the footy. Footy uh, five. And he was just like lost it. But the two rucks were great. Uh, Sean Darcy and Jackson. Jackson kicked a couple of goals. Even Darcy front and centered one kicked a goal. But they absolutely dominated Brody Grundy mm. and just they smashed him. Their efficiency going forward was fantastic. They hit up a miss and Tracy straight on the chest a fair few times. Uh, the Swans tackling was just bad. They mm. couldn't hold on to a lot of tackles. They side slipped step, off. Side steps, yeah. um, but this was a great win for Freo. Like, they were brilliantly coached. They had a game plan mm. and they pulled it off. So like, this is... It's a huge win for their season as well. Because if they'd come to Sydney, done all that, and still got beaten, it'd be like, ah, oh, oh, that sucks. Yeah. But everyone played their role. Caleb Sarong was phenomenal around the contest. Aiden Young was A awesome. lot of clearances. Aiden Young. Yeah, Clark was good as well. Yep. Even though he was getting sort of tagged, but he still played that defensive role at the same time. Tracy was crushing it. Yeah. yeah. He's they, been so good they the last couple months. Yeah. I, I couldn't really find one player for Freya that you'd be like, yeah, you had a, a shocker there. They all did their role, and it's won them the game. Whereas for the Swans, Brody Grundy, Errol Gordon, Isaac Heaney, Chad Warner played their worst game of the year well, by that, so far. Those was guys, it because they were yeah. like intimidated by how handsome Frio were? Well, Bailey Banfield yeah, was in the forward pocket. Banfield, so. Sarong, Sarong, yeah, Sarong, yeah, a lot like, of handsome guys. Yeah. Pretty handsome. Yeah. 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 Are we as handsome as them? I don't think we are. That's, but, a, that's, a, hand, that's a handsome so, off, actually. They've actually been Sydney. handsomed off their own yeah. ground. That <laughs> is an absolute pantsing in the realm of NBA Australia. 
Pantsing the night went to Sydney being pants by not yeah. being as handsome as Frio. See, yeah. that's why Dane Rampey had a shocker because he was looking at Bailey Banfield going, God damn, you are handsome. <laughs> you are and then that's why Jai Oh, that's why, that's why, that's why, that's why, oh has got it again. Um, the, yeah, Jai is not actually handsome. At all, but so getting the footy like, a lot. Um, I love you. Don't, don't get me wrong. I love Jai Miss. He's awesome. Not handsome yeah. ah, by right. conventional fashion. He finally right. kicked straight. Actually, non, three goals. Straight. Non-conventional, non-handsome. Uh, the lizard. He was the best <laughs> on the ground by so far. It wasn't funny. Yeah. Yeah. He the, was. Uh, it was great. Winning goal assist. Yeah. yeah. He put the Swans like on his back. Yeah. He kicked that mad goal from fifty-five out. I thought Hayden McLean, like that Carlton final last year, took a bunch of grabs. He was great. The Swans have done all of this and they've lost by a point. Mm. It's like, oh yeah, like when most of your good dudes suck, and you, and you only lose by a point. Like, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's so. the, like uh, Golden Heaney and Warner linked up once, and this one's kicked a and goal. And the fact yeah. that they didn't kick a goal, like any of them, no, no, or, I, think, or, or I think Chad did. Or did Chad? Uh, Chad or Errol? One. Oh, okay. Them. But it was there was one link up on goals. the half forward flank mm. in the third quarter. It was a couple of handballs. It's like. All right, boys, here we go. Yes. Um, the Swans kicked seven goals in the third quarter, and I still think they played terribly. So <laughs> I think the biggest thing, so to take the wind yeah. out of your sail here, is like what are the fan bases feeling? I feel like the coolest thing if you're a Sydney fan is like you go into this game the entire time, you suck. Yeah. You're like, this game is horrible. Point, yeah. We stink. Mm. We're so bad. At no point in the second half did you feel like you weren't going to come back and win that yeah, game. Yeah, I know. Mm. It's same, it's similar Sydney to were Bol- just like, we're always going to win this. They fell yeah. short because they just got ahead of themselves a little bit. Yeah. And Frio were just it, really good. And it was also like a super flat game, but Frio like nailed the game plan. Mm. And there was just 10 minutes where they slipped off and that's where the Swans punished them. So great win for Frio. Frio fans like, top four, we can do yeah, this. Yeah, I said four. that a couple of weeks ago and then they conceded 152 and points. But Rational yeah. Swans fan, fans out there, shout out to did the Swans win. Yep. They're like, okay, it's not the end of the world. We're still first by eight points. Yep. And also a loss might be one of those things that goes, okay, we're not the world champions. We need to... I still think you're, like, you're not going to lose the rest of the year. Well, that, <laughs> that's <laughs> fine. but lose- Keep saying that and they might keep losing. At least that's what. That might, yeah. that might uh, work well. It's that almost work. like it's the joke. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, but Frio, look, that was fantastic. That was fantastic. Great job. Yeah. That was great. Caleb Sarong rules. Mm-hmm. So their fans would be up and about, all eight of them. Yeah. Uh, Gold Coast, <laughs> where did they play? Gold Coast. Where's that above? The 28th parallel. That's right. So Latitude. the parallel, ex- <laughs> parallel <laughs> <Alex> effect. <laughs> 101 against the Collingwood Magpies, the reigning champions. Yep. Reigning world champions of AFL football. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, yeah. We're going to be Still like my America. favorite thing about the, the National Basketball Association. National Basketball Association. Yeah. I hate American champions. sports doing that. Love it annoys that. me so much. So the Collingwood Magpies, world champions of Australia. Uh, <laughs> 90. Yep. You hate to see it. You hate to see an entire, entire stadium in full of sunny Magpies Queensland fans, full yeah. of Magpies yeah. fans just come away disappointed. It would be a real shame if that just kept on happening, wouldn't it? I mean, <laughs> what are we saying? Thing is... This is exactly what we talked to Callum Dick about during yeah. in the middle of the week. It's like Gold Coast when they're at home. If the midfield like actually dominates, they win, and they did. It's yeah. almost as simple as that. Anderson thirty nine, Flanders thirty three, took thirty one. Why can't they get over thirty touches away from home? It doesn't because if they go, it doesn't make any sense though. Parallel because that's God. They also need probably a certain percentage of humidity. Humidity, as well. maybe. Yeah, it's, it's all of that. They're like plants. To me, yeah. they're like plants. It's like what is my sort of like temperature? What's my ideal temperature? What's my uh, moisture in the air <laughs> yeah. factor? Do they need a sauna possibly in the rooms for their away games? Maybe. Yeah. Just to be a bit hotter. All right, take us through some stats here. Uh, I, I, was, I didn't have that too many stats in here, but uh, I just said well, about just the, the crowd. The crowd in general, about there was lots of Pies fans. I thought that might overawe the Suns players. But then the Suns fans just lifted in the last quarter and they were very, getting very excited. They got the drums out and well, things like that. Well, the coolest part is. Hmm. I love, yeah. I love the da, 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 when they kick the goal. <laughs> like the squid heard that. He's like, what was that? I'm like, that's the trumpet. Every time He's they like, kick what are you talking yeah. about? I'm like, that's what that happens when they kick a goal. He's like, that's cool. I'm it like, is you're cool. damn right it is. Yeah. <laughs> and away they go. The thing is, this was crucial for the Suns. Mm-hmm. They got down. Yeah. They were, they were down. And usually the Collingwood comeback. When, Collingwood, it, when Collingwood come back, you cannot stop a Collingwood comeback. And they did. They came back from the comeback. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It was very funny that uh, the commentator was like, oh, they've got no run, they're flat, they've got nothing. And like literally seven seconds later, they kicked the goal. was like, oh, I'm just going to run down the other yeah, end. Yeah, it was like, goal. Just, so Jordan Lewis goes, oh, they're flat-footed. Bang, they've kicked a the goal. Bang, they've kicked another yeah, one. It was in great. face, Jordan Lewis. It was <laughs> very funny. Uh, <laughs> you go. No, I just love the simple fact that like my beloved Noah Anderson was crushing yep. it. Yeah, at home uh, always. Because he's at home. Yep. That's what Noah Anderson does. Spoke. We know that. 
Ben King stepped up again. Big game. I said he was going to kick five. I was close. Ben Long. Four goals. Yeah. yeah. Ben, ben Long, Long was great. The, the unheralded Ben Long was yeah. fantastic yeah. as well. Snapping stuff from out of nowhere. They it's, are so exciting when they're up oh, and about. But this game was, ex- this game was, was so exciting fun. in general. Yeah. There was just end-to-end end non-stop footy. It was just a great game to watch, added to the fact that Collingwood got beaten. Yeah, made beautiful. It possibly the best game of the season. Nothing better. Maybe the century. The goal, he kicked one from the boundary as well. That, that, was, was, that was insane. Goal. You're like, was oh, the goal, he's back. But it also showed that Collingwood, like, yes, okay, they've nearly pulled off the comeback again, but they still can't keep playing mediocre football and rely on five minutes of Nick Dacos' brilliance yes. to get them back into the game and winning games. Yep. Dacos was pretty good, though. It was great, yeah. <laughs> well, I know, that's what I mean. It's, it's two touches and two goals. But that's what I mean. With, without him, him, without yeah. him, they get smashed off the park. Yep. yep. And it's at, at the moment, they are just relying on him to sort of pull them pull them up and over and get the job done. I know Dugowie looks like he's in good touch, but then you look at uh, Darcy Moore. He's cool. He's a shadow of himself. This year he's been horrible, yeah. Like, so eight of the top 11 ball winners in this game were Suns. Yeah. And like that's the key every they do that time. Every time at home. Every yeah. time they're at yeah. home or in oh. the Northern Territory, they just A lot of handball, a lot of run. Yeah. Good speed. That was awesome. Hemsworth was really handy. Kicked, yeah. Popped up for a couple of goals, including that really massive one late. Braden uh, Maynard. Maynard. We'll talk about him later. Oh, okay. it was a bit wow. soft, yeah, as usual. Great flop. Yeah. Uh, but basically, if you're a fan of either team, right? So take it from each fan base. Mm-hmm. Pies fans are like, ah, oh, it's just the Gold Coast, whatever. I'm just saying, you might end up up there for a final. Oh, just saying. Maybe. They win 15 yeah, games. If they end up in games. fifth, the Pies are suddenly and then eighth or something. Suns will have that around. belief they Who could knows? beat them in the final. Yeah. That'd be wild. Mm. Uh, if you're the Suns, you're like, can we. Just do this once. No, 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 away. no. This, this would be this would be leads off home. shots at shooters. Who cares? Let's go. We've knocked <laughs> off Collingwood. Let's, 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 go, <laughs> let's hit it up. Cocktails and dreams. Let's go. I hope they do that because then they're going to be all cooked for uh, the game against. Oh, North shut up! Yeah. All right, Adelaide <laughs> GWS. Uh, this was a Barry Crocker shocker. Ninety four seventy eight. Adelaide were down massive. It, what was it? The second quarter, they kicked seven straight yep, to yep. finish the second quarter, yep. and it was game over. But this also oh. shows the importance of teams having their most important players in their team. So Isaac Rankin played. Sam he Taylor didn't. Yep. No, yeah. you're right. Sam Taylor's a massive out for the yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they won. Didn't just they win last week? Uh, yeah. No, I don't know. Oh, no, they, they smashed them last week. They got week. smashed. They got smashed. Yes. I'm just like, I really, it'd be nice if like Toby Green was alive. Like, What's going on with him? He he's could, dropped he off. one goal, didn't he? He's dropped off a cliff. I mean, again, again, I was... I. Due to overlap and clashing games, see nothing. I yes, yeah, all the he the kicked highlights. three goals. Okay. Oh, there right. you go. And you're like, this is. But I saw that Whitfield had the, forty. The game breaking mm. aspect of Toby Green. He it's had like that he one a, game against. He Jordan. has a half decent game in this one, and you're like, and nothing else happened. Mm. They didn't this get is not the Giants that we had in the first yep. four or five weeks no. of this season. This is the exact Giants they've been for the last two months. Yep. And it is brutal. Whereas Adelaide. Matthew Nix just saved his job. He was like, hey, I've got oh, a gig for know, next year. This is that. awesome, boys. I don't know. But uh, outside six, six of weeks. that, yeah. like, Lucky Whitfield had 41 touches. Tom Green had 38. Nothing touches. And oh. it was just brutal. So It was just bombing it into the forward line. Giants at one point were 40 minutes without kicking a goal. But can we talk about this Giants forward line, though? Yeah, because it's so bad at the moment. In the first six weeks of the season, they were the best forward line in the competition, yep. averaging 107 points a game. They were, what, 5-1, and 6-0, and zero, whatever they were. Before, it was five before and zero, they played think, yeah. the Swans in the derby. Yep. Yeah, before Carlton kicked their heads in down here. At yeah. Yes. At, but since then, so since round seven, GWS are 15th for points scored. They averaged 69 so points weird. a game. Nice. Uh, but <laughs> nice. no shock that who's below them with West Coast, North Melbourne, Richmond. But... This is a team that were talked about as flag favourites. Their yeah, six forwards are like so good on paper as well. They've just been horrible. Like Callum Brown, the guy that yeah. no one wants to play on or get near because he could do anything. Jesse yeah. Hogan could win a Coleman. Toby Green. Yeah, remember remember when we said that? I forgot about Jesse Hogan was going to win a Coleman. Well, he kicked two in this game, but it's like yeah. it's He's still just so near. inconsequential. It's yeah. mm. brutal to watch. It's, there's Whereas just, Adelaide, they're at home and they ran over the top of them. Like, yeah, great we're not job. Ran over the top of them. They back. just hit the front and it's like, see ya. Yeah. I could, that seven goal run, as I was like watching it unfold, you're like, ah. Oh. They should have won by more. Remember as this well. team? They missed some. Remember yeah. this team? That, this like, is, this the, is team. the team that I said this before the, the season team. is going to be good. And they do it every seven weeks. They play well. <laughs> Not even that. <laughs> Maybe eight weeks. Yeah. Uh, fan bases, I mean, the Giants fans just like, come on, man. Like, what are we doing here? This There's is seven of them. They should be so much better. Uh, and then Adelaide a lot. 
Why didn't we do this in April? This <laughs> yeah, sucks. I know. Like, yeah, that- hooray, we won. But God damn it, why did yeah. we wait till July? At this point, they're just like, wait, we actually start need to start losing so we get a better draft. Pick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, we need to slip underneath St Kilda. Like, let's see the West Coast like, Eagles like in a couple more. It's like Fogarty 3, Tex 2, Rankin, Rochelle 2, That's but they kicked want, 2, yeah. 3, and 2, 4. Ben mm. Keys 2. All the dudes did their job. But and they haven't just, been doing it all year, but like, except for Rankin. Yeah, like when Callan Ward's kicking 2, it's just like, oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Rochelle and Rankin, happy days. Good yep. job. Yeah. On your, Mitch on your fans. good, apparently. Tough one. Hey, Geelong Essendon, this was a fun game. The Cats. Great game. What do they do? Beat, beat Essendon. Essendon. Yeah, always. Uh, oh, in country. What right? do they do country today? Day. Again, beat Essendon. What do they do it at? The country game this week. <laughs> uh, 7.30 on a Saturday night in yeah. the city. Love a good country game. AFL. I'm just knocking this one out of the park. 105.60. Jeez, I mean, it'd really be a shame if Essendon like raised everyone's hopes a little mm. bit more and like dashed them. I'm just saying, but they were awesome in the first half, and then it got they really were awesome in the first quarter. Well, no, even the second quarter, they smashed second them in the entire fifties. They just, they just didn't. They couldn't use it properly. That's what I mean. That, they, that's what I mean. The first quarter was great. So they kicked, they kicked the goals in the second quarter. They should have been six goals yeah, in front. That's true. That is true. But then but they, probably, they weren't. They still could have lost possibly. But they are oh, something about us. And I said it during the week. They've only been still one team in the top eleven. They're not that good. They're not that good for the team that's sitting at the. So that's one of the funniest set, stats oh, now, now when you say, oh, they've only beaten X amount of teams in the top eight. That changes literally game to game now. That yeah, changes, well, it does. changes yeah. every season. Actually, let me double eight. check. Like the Fremantle Actually, ones, like, hold on, Melbourne were technically fourth at the time when we smashed. Because, it's, uh, who, who but was it's it? No, they beat GWS and they're out of the eight. So they haven't beaten anyone but, in yet. But you look at it, it's like they've beaten West Coast twice, they've beaten North Melbourne, they've beaten, what, Hawthorne, Richmond. It's like they've beaten the bottom side, yeah. they beat St Kilda. So they've they've done their dash against the good the, the crap teams down below. They've played the Swans. They got smashed. They've been smashed by Carlton. They've yep. been smashed here by Geelong. They they drew with Collingwood. Drew with Collingwood. Probably going to get smashed this week. Oh yeah, yeah. But everyone, but we're saying that now. But everyone, everyone still tipped them last week. I don't know. Well, weird. that's because. I didn't, but, but also, yeah. you got to remember, Geelong got beaten by seventy points last yeah. week. It's a big yeah. turnaround. It was just a great like, turnaround. It's you going. Essendon are actually they look okay. This is the time for yep. them to come about. Hey, this is real. And then once again, <laughs> you have. Have proven you are the biggest frauds in the game. <laughs> Always. More fraudier than Port Adelaide. Yep. More, more fraudier than, uh, I don't know, the bloke you got who ended up hanging out in Mallorca <laughs> oh. in the late 80s. That's a grab. I can't remember his name. I'm trying to think. Christopher of- Scase. There oh, we go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jeez, that joke would have flown if I had to remember the name. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who bought Black Caviar's full relation that had the $150 million Ponzi scheme. That dude. Yeah, okay. fraudy than anybody who's like really into Bitcoin. Uh, Logan Paul. Here we have like a very interesting setup, right? You have a Geelong team that's barely won any games the last eight weeks. Yeah. You have it's been a, smashed by good teams. This yeah. is their bunny team. We understand that. Essen are up and about. They hit a point in that second quarter where – it was in the third quarter where all the umpiring decisions go completely haywire. Yeah, it did they were helpful. It was in the third. It was like four decisions go com- like in against about five them, almost one after the other, and you're like, "It's an offense." Like even oh. I'm like losing it, just going, "What is happening?" And you can hear you were there, right? Yeah. So you can hear those fans. Oh, I was go, next to them. <laughs> oh my god! And like when something Alexander like that safe. happens, it's that one of the, fun. It's one of those great fan experiences when everything just goes against you. Like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Man? And then they and lose like, by forty. Everyone, Everybody loses their mind. Yeah. But the problem was the team lost their mind. Yeah. yeah. They the didn't settle after those did not free kicks. They lost their heads. They, yeah. they didn't get near the footy when that happened because you had what? Draper got physically assaulted, no free kick. Then there was the holding the ball that should have been given against Tom Stewart. There was a handball he missed. Yep. Then there was, I think it was a Jack Bowes throw. Then Tyson Stangle got awarded holding the ball for tackling someone. As soon as they picked it up. I it, like that one because he had his arm free. I still like that one. Ma- he had, he, he'd hooked his leg as well. It but was like he was in he a figure the four later. I, know, I, like, I didn't mind that. And one. then there was the deliberate behind, which I wasn't mad about, but then there was another one, like the ball went out that should have been deliberate. It didn't. And every S, it was that one. Right and it was like, what is this? This is the worst thing ever. Why are you doing this to us? And I'm sitting there going, <laughs> when you're at those games, you're like, there is like, there's a moment where you're like, Anger. someone's going to run on the field. Yeah. Like, someone's going to run on the field and just swing at somebody. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, it didn't happen, which is good. But at the same time, composure just went completely out of the window. And to be honest, karma. <laughs> Come on. Sam Draper just diving on a yeah, ball. Yeah. I remember how awesome that was with like the up didn't pin me for that. Yeah. Karma. Sucked in. <laughs> 
Geelong also, uh, I was gonna, I wrote that down. They put Tom Stewart in the midfield, which a lot of Words people. Weird. Uh, I, you know, he, he was good. He got a few clearances. Jack uh, Bowes ruled as Jack well. Jack Bowes was awesome. He's been so inconsistent, but he was he was really good. And then uh, is it Lawson? Lawson Humphries? Have I wrote that down? Yeah. Down right? Yeah. Great on debut. Fifteen disposals, five scoring. Yeah, Every time he got the ball, he did something good, and I was yeah. very excited watching him. Once again, Geelong finds some dude from the third division of the <laughs> yeah. Western Australian Southern Districts Football League at yeah. pick three hundred, and he's awesome. He's so good. Yeah. God damn uh, you, Geelong. Two fan bases, like Bombers fans are all right. At the same time, they're just like. They still lost by 45 points. You can't I, know, blame the I know decisions 45. went against them, yeah. but you lost by 45 points. Yeah. Peter Wright couldn't get near it after the second quarter. Mm-hmm. Kyle Langford was barely near it. I think Stringer, ha- it feels but like Ess- Stringer had three touches. Essendon fans know this. Yes. They're just like, oh my God. Is it going to happen again? <laughs> it's happening again. <laughs> yeah. My Essendon mate, who I went to the game with, like, because he just left, he just, he was. In the last quarter, just sitting there, just not talking. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's it's just like this reoccurring nightmare. Cats fans, I think, are a little bit confused. Like, are we good? Yeah, there's a bit. I of that. said last week on the show. I, I still think they're good. They just yeah. ha- haven't shown it. They got a good team. They got All a good right. team. Let's fly through the rest of the yeah. games. <laughs> yeah, killed a port. An incredible game, this. sixty to sixty-two. When I say incredible, I mean incredibly horrible. Uh, yes. Because it's St. Kilda. This was the on. worst game I've ever seen. And you watched all of it. I watched all of it. <laughs> Wait a minute. You've said this about every St. Kilda game you've ever seen. Yeah, it's so a really It's getting worse. Game. It's getting worse. It was a St. Kilda North game last year. Oh, that, you just, actually, sorry, to that was the worst That's game I'm ever. pretty sure there was like a house in somewhere in the, nor- in the northern suburbs that got burnt down because a- Alex was just so angry yeah. about this. It's like... Uh, I don't know, was it anger from like inside mm. inside out? Just like, <laughs> and that's what Alex did. He just turned it. That game was yeah, It's like when Homer like... turns into the Hulk. Yes. Yeah. After pushing down all of his like anger yeah, bumps. The anger bump. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bom, bom, That's going to be me next week when the Swans play St. Kilda. That's St. Kilda. It's what happens, but eight right? Eight goals, 12 to eight goals, 14 in a closed roof marvel. No, not accurate. Not skillful. The, the skill was horrendous. The goal kicking was just disgusting. <laughs> Chinese water torch is honestly more fun than this. Um, <laughs> This game was literally like Jason Nord Francis going, hey, hey. Check this check, out. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, see that? I'm going to kick it to that guy, and then I'm going to run over there, and I'm going to get kick it back, the goal, yeah. and then I'm going to let Jeremy Finlayson kick the goal. Yeah. And see, that they, was about it. They were down to this game, and they came flying back, and then just sort of held on down the street. Well, they kicked the first gross. couple of goals, and then St. Kilda got back. The first quarter was good. Mm. The next week quarter is not so what good. A gross game. Max King had no impact once again for a dude who's on a lot of money oh, and he wants more be money. so much better. He's every chance of getting dropped the he, way he's his going. His brother has stolen his power, all of his powers, because his yeah. brother's all killing it. And, and they Max is yeah. uh, themselves. <laughs> Jack Higgins snapping it around the corner from 25 meters out and not making the distance that would have put them in front and probably won them yeah, the game. Yeah, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> Ross Lyon may murder you. Yeah. So 32 to 22 in the clearances for Port yeah. Adelaide mm-hmm. and 28 to 4 in terms of scoring from. Clearances. Yeah. That's Ooh. a huge Well, Butters difference. got a goal from himself. On the, that's one of the that, best goals That was of the year, one, yeah. but it was also like, there was times where it was like, oh, yeah, they'll get the clearance, but their forward entry was so bad. It was like, Butters is like, <laughs> just bang, bang kick it, it long. Yeah, it's like, it, there's yeah. no... They have a predisposition for a lot of that as well. Yeah, but and like without Charlie Dixon firing, Finlayson just being a giant spud this year. Mm. Marshall like, looked all right. Very, like, Georgiades has been fantastic at times this season, but... There's just still something lacking about this yeah. team. But when they fire, they look awesome. When they sort of just sort of stink it up, you're like, oh, they're wild. They're very bad. Yeah. Yeah. Alia Alia Ali was really good at centre half back as well. Yeah, I did it, it for great. Ken, and you love to see yeah. that. Yes. Uh, St. Kilda definitely did that for Ross. Yeah. Stuff you, Ross. Whores. Uh, <laughs> How the two fan base, like St. Kilda fans are like, all oh, right, again, because they're like, why are we bad? Why are we this bad? And they bad? always lose close games. <laughs> why are they bad? Why are they bad? Because Ross Lyon stinks it's as true. a coach. They play negative footy. You can have all yeah. the mates you want in the media. <laughs> what are we? Part of the media. I get it. But at the same time, everybody go, oh, he's been such a good bloke. His no, team he's... righteously underperformed yeah. because they play disgusting, yep. ugly football. Yep. And it's not winning football. Because yeah. even last year, they, they were really good defensively, but they could still score your 80 points. A little bit. But now they're not even trying year, to score 80 60. points. 8 goals, 12 yeah. against Port. Um, what are we doing? Next At week, home. I'm just going to be so mad. <laughs> Uh, Port <laughs> fans would just be stoked that Ken Hinckley's got a job. Yeah, and Port, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ten Port. more years for Ken. Ten more years for Ken. Sign him up. Sign him up. <laughs> Richmond Carlton. Richmond 70 Carlton 131. Really good game for the Blues in the second half. Yeah. Kicked away in that third yeah. quarter. Uh, exactly as I sort of expected that Richmond would put up a good fight. And as I was hoping. You did say that, yeah. I was hanging out with the, uh, the squids were downstairs at the in-laws place. They're like running around. The baby has put a giant box over his head. And I'm like, that's hilarious. And he's like, look at me, do it again, Dad. I'm like, this is great. Check my phone. <laughs> You're doing great, buddy. He's like, and then he ran into a wall. I'm like, hey, I'm a good dad. 
free range. Yeah, it's <laughs> fantastic. Range. The other, the other two, not caged. The other two kids like bashing each other with boxes over their heads, like running. It's like the Simpsons where it's like the homers all charging at each yeah. other. They were doing that with boxes. And I'm like, this is just good parenting. <laughs> Meanwhile, Carlton just started kicking away ever so slightly. What was it? Two goal deficit at halftime. Yeah. Richmond, Richmond did, was sticking around. They showed that old school sort Bolter, of pressure. Bolter was yeah. still really good up forward. Yeah. And I still hate him just <laughs> with a real, real passion. So. Kaziski, I always will hate him as well. Well, Kaziski wouldn't, I don't think he'd get a game anywhere. But the best part about this is, this is the first time that Carlton have beat Richmond twice in a season since 2013. Yeah. That was a pretty good year for Carlton. Years. Yeah. Uh, it's a really long time to not beat a team twice in the one year where you're like, ha we got them. They finally got them. Uh, that, second, that second half was awesome. Like between mm -hmm. Chicotta, Fogarty was a fantastic yep. form up forward. I love that. When Fogarty pops up and just goes, oh, just kick a couple. Oh, kick goals, yeah, this yeah. is sick. <laughs> Charlie kicked a couple. Harry, I think, ended up with one or two, two, I think, in the end. Yep. Uh, but this is the P. Cripps show. He was, all, he was, was bursting out of the this middle. This was yeah. built for P. Cripps, mm. three votes. That should be his full name now. P. Cripps, three votes. <laughs> if Oscar Allen is going to be Oscar Allen, two plus goals, P. Cripps, P. Three, P. Cripps three, oh, three votes. He's one of Brownlow, so he's allowed to have that, I think. Yeah. Checks out. Mm. Uh, great win for Carlton because all they needed to do was win. They won. They won. They put Richmond to the sword, and it's exactly what you want to see. 61-point win. They kicked away at the end as well. Rather than it looked like for a minute, they were, they were just going to sort of like, oh, here we go. We'll win by 28. <laughs> Yeah, that's and we'll, what, make, we'll just sort of stink it up down as, the stretch. Yeah, but they yeah. went, actually, check this out. Mm. We're bang, we're bang, we're bang, we're bang. Laid on it, laid in the wood late. Arazio was awesome. Down your scale. He, he, of course, he kicks four goals against the second bottom yeah. team. He's done nothing Can all year. Can you do year. that against a good team? I'd love to see that, Arazio. Uh, yeah. But his goal from like 50 metres out, that it was just sort of kick. swung yeah. out and then swung back in, was beautiful. So, how are the fan base is feeling about this? Rich me like a little bit disconsolate, just like, ah, this year sucks. We get it. Yeah. They still got uh, 70 points, which is Dusty too bad. injured at some point, goes off. Mm. We don't know the severity of that. Carlton fans like, we won. Everybody else in the top four going to this week lost. So that's awesome. Yep. Then finally, West Coast Hawthorne. Oh, this was. Uh, uh, I thought West this was going to be a good game. West Coast, what are you doing? This was, no, this was West Coast's worst performance of the year. This, oh, 100%. Yeah. 100. 33 to 94. This is. Four goals, nine to 14, 10. You had 24 we were talking up, but this is 13. But this is also the strongest team that West Coast have put on paper all year. Yep. Everyone's finally there. Everyone's finally back. For a couple of years, back. probably. Because it's, even the last two years, they've had so many outs. Yeah. All their players were back. And it's it's at home, and you have shown absolutely nothing. Mm. You've been smashed off the park by a team who's sort of well, that 8 well, to 12th well. range. Yep. What was it? 35, 18 at the half. Yeah. And then... But Hawks, like Alex Hawks said, the Eagles only yeah. managed another... 15 points. That's, Hawthorne geez, probably should have been horrible. six goals in front at, at half time. But yep. this is one of those things where if you're West Coast fans, you're on the board at West Coast, you're like, all right, Simo, maybe we wind you up at the end oh, of this year. Oh, I don't know. No, because maybe. It, he has been there for a long time. He has been there forever. He's pushed them through this year because everyone thought this year was going to be even worse. Mm. And I still think there is another hill coming for West Coast. But this was really bad. Harley Reid was awesome, though. He had 20. He didn't really. He wasn't like, he just wanted to bring him up. He wasn't that good. He didn't affect the game that much. What are you talking about? He had a career high 14 contested possessions. Okay. Yeah. That's because of uh, Hawthorne's There's no one pressure. Else. There's no one else getting <laughs> yeah. in to touch the yeah. ball, apparently. He, what That's did he get? Good. The second most touches for Giant West Coast. John Newcomb has 33. Dylan Moore has 29. <laughs> Warple has 28. But 26 like, for Day. 25 for Nash. Impey has 25. Jack Gunston was everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. Gunston chaos. got a lot of goal assists. Got four goal assists. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Troll was there. The wizard kicked the goal and shushed the crowd. Uh, Tim Kelly had 15 touches. It's just, yeah. I mean, mm. Barras had 14. Yo had 13. Yo like, had 13. Brutal oh. from the so, West Coast. Eagles. Hawthorne flying. They are. They've won the bird ball. Hawk over eagle. I said clearly. this during the week. They are one of the most consistent teams in the comp at the moment. Like, as in, what have they won? Now? Like five straight or yeah. something. There's no many teams that are doing that. It's unbelievable. And well, I mean, you know, my dogs eventually. I would love, I would love for straight. them to uh, to make the finals, but it's going to be tough. Yeah. They're gonna be. They're gonna be. But know, this was one 10? of those squirrely games for Hawthorne. If they lost, they'd be like, "Oh yeah, that that feels right. Yeah. That's Hawthorne." But they've come out and they've absolutely smashed them. That's one of those ones. Like, mm. Oh yeah, they're, they're real. Yeah. West Coast. Oh. Yeah. yeah West that's Coast bad. is struggling. That's not. That's just a. Even if they lost that, they're like, "All right, Hawks are a better team." But they got smashed. Yeah, they were horrendous. So, fan bases. In, in terms of the fan bases, mm. Hawks are just like, "Oh, we can beat anybody in this exact range." Mm. Yeah. The, it's like in our range, right? So what is it, 3 through 13? Yeah, I reckon they, Hawthorne will back I, themselves to go, we can beat they, literally yeah, anybody in yeah. that 3 to 13 range. Which is crazy uh, to say. Thing is, they have just beaten 
the hell out. Like they've kicked in the head of the Eagles. Yeah. The Tigers. They beat GWS. GWS who are not very good. No. Adelaide who are not very good. They beat the Lions down here at Marvel. Yeah. They lost They lost that horrible Port game. They beat a Saints team that sort of stinks. They did beat the dogs when the dogs were like, hey, check out this roller coaster we're going to be yeah, on. Like, yeah. They got flogged by the Swans. Just, oh, I know they haven't played that really good teams, but they're showing consistency. But they're Every other team If in you the can comp, beat the teams that yeah. are in front of you, who cares? But that's Every the other, same thing with Essendon. They were yeah. saying that about them. Then they've come up against a good team and get beaten. So it's like when, when Hawthorne <laughs> plays, I suppose when this weekend Hawthorne played Geelong in Geelong. Yep. If they can come out and win, that's like, okay, this is real. If they don't, it's like, okay. We know where the, uh, the Ablett Bowl, that one. Because mm. he played for Hawthorne he did. before he, he did, did Geelong, you know. Yes. Uh, and the Eagles fan base are just like, oh, come on. What the hell was that? Yeah. What the <laughs> hell was that? Oh, that was, was gross. What about a sellout crowd? What are they uh, doing? Yeah. Tipping results. I think I got five in the end. I ended up with six. Because I, I had the Eagles. I got uh, seven. Week. Let's nice go. Job stats guy. All right. Full credit to the boys. The best team we saw this week. Not Brisbane. I wrote down Brisbane. Yeah, that's And wrong. that was a joke. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say. Because it's the Blues. <laughs> Yeah. Da, 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 Against da, Richmond, da, da, da. no, we beat Richmond. Whatever. It's. I'm trying to lead into this idea of like, all right, we would have been about very Carlton to slip up. I'm just going to say Frio. We all we're all like Frio. Frio. Surely, Frio. Surely. The, the way that they played, the way that yeah. they delivered, like, I, I want to give a little bit of honourable mention to Geelong. It's a really good yeah, bounce a good back. Win. Yep. But Frio were the best team. Like, those are the best Gold team Coast as well. Gold Coast. They are playing in the, above the twenty eighth parallel, <laughs> but yeah, to be they're fair, they're expected to win. Yeah, they were fantastic. That midfield was incredible. But Frio played the best all round full game, yeah. beating the best team in the AFL. Yeah, yeah. that was awesome. You beat on the, the road Lattler. in the SCG. Like, what are we doing here? Frio as awesome. well. What Alex said about Sean Darcy and Luke Jackson playing well together—that is what Frio fans want. And the fact that they did that is scary for the, for the opposition now. We knew that they're not that bad at the SCG. That was a thing we mm. talked about on the Thursday night show. Yes, yeah. And I didn't expect them to do it. Oh, they, so you, I heard you guys, as I listened to the show, you guys oh, talked nice. about that was in the middle of when the Swans were losing a lot of games yeah. because they had no McCartans, no Callum Mills and Chad Warner mm. at that time last year. And I think Laddams was rocking. So the Swans were depleted. Yeah. So this result, much better than the one last year. I agree, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gold Coast, <clears throat> when that midfield fires, they're awesome. Yep. Yep. They're at home. It's what you expect. They're so much fun, but... Do it on the road. I'm already excited for the first. Do it on the road. <laughs> That's the best thing about this Freo win. They came over to the SCG. Mm-hmm. They kicked the heads into that Sydney team. They've been really good. Like the sword yeah. and end up winning by a point. Yep. It was amazing. Good stuff. Best dog ground of the week. Who was the best player we saw? I believe his full name is P. Cripps. Three votes. <laughs> what end up like? This is the exact game that's built for Patrick Cripps. It's like what is it? Wit, gross, <laughs> ugly. Boosh. Yeah, pretend, pretends it's dry. He yeah. just muscles everybody out of the road, <laughs> handball out of the yeah. contest, and away we go. There was, I think I said, he, the bloke's on more of a roll than chicken at a schnitz. Like, that's what he <laughs> rolls. Like, so what can we get on a schnitz? Oh, you get chicken on a roll. Oh, it's Paddy Cripps. I love that. <laughs> he is absolutely flying. Should they have a, an item at schnitz called the Paddy Cripps? They ought the to. The Paddy Cripps schnitz. Nice. Oh, that brought to you by James Clemens. <laughs> <laughs> That's too long. <laughs> Pete Cripps, three votes. Oh, this yeah. might be his three, third straight game, three straight of three votes. And mm. this is like the pedal to the metal for the Brownlow vibe. Because you think about, we've we talked about time and time again with the Sydney team. All they those still dudes. Votes. Well, none of them got a vote yesterday. Exactly. Oh, and yeah. they keep just like. But that also might happen. Like they could still, like, because Heaney's got a lot early. He could still spin it around. They cannibalizing each other though. Like Golden, Heaney. Uh, who else is out there? Warner. Warner as well, Warner. right? So they're going to sort of keep chopping at it. So Lizard got the three yesterday Crips. for sure. Just saying. <laughs> Stats boy? Uh, Josh Dunkley. I think you briefly mentioned it before. I still He's a bit of an underrated player. He's been killing it since he went to the Lions. 32 disposals, 10 score involvements, 10 tackles, 7 clearances. He was doing everything. He was the only guy that had double uh, figures in tackles. If you're getting over eight tackles, you're a beast. I think Viney got eight tackles. You can always rely on him. But Dunkley does it every week. He's, I think he's underrated on the defensive side. Everyone sort of looks at, oh, he got a lot of clearances, Lockie Neal, or he did this, he did that. You don't want to face Dunkley because he can just tackle you to the ground every time. So he's the best player of the week. He He's so good. Was like their only midfielder doing anything. Yeah. yeah. For like big yeah. swathes of that first half. So enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alex. Noah Anderson, 39 touches and was awesome. He did everything. Was Jim's beloved Noah Anderson. Ah. Your Why? beloved because, Jed Walter because wasn't Jed Walter playing. wasn't playing. Yeah. yeah, Jed Walter's not playing. It's like get out of here. You. <laughs> I'm not watching the <laughs> VFL. You know, yeah. you didn't even watch the VFL. Yeah. Jed Walter. He was fantastic. 39 <laughs> touches, just around it all the time, and set up a win for the, for the Suns. He'd win a Brownlow if he played every game at home. It's and like Jack Lukosius would win a Coleman if he played every yep. game in the Northern Territory. Yep. Yep. 
All mate, no mates. Who's got no mates this week? Braden Maynard, war criminal. Uh, also, <laughs> flog of the week, the runaway winner. Oh, sir, he touched me. I've been shot. Somebody call the police. Yeah. Ah, I've been murderated. What about when he grabbed his head? He got touched in the chest. He's like, grab it. Oh. He's got like touched there. You can't do this in the day and age where every single thing you do on a football football field is very clearly going to be on camera exactly, yep. and going to be gone over by every lunatic on Twitter going, ah, <laughs> blow it out your nose, Brayden Maynard, you war criminal. And away we go, right? I every guy it. on Twitter, Jim. Hey, hey, it's also me. It's me. <laughs> also sitting at the group chat going, ah, look at this. <laughs> I, But also for the guy, the guy who acts tough, yeah, act to guys that are the same height as stats guy. You can't, you can't hey, be, can him, you can't him. be the tough guy and be like, oh, I'm really tough. Look at me, I'm a tough go, guy. Oh. Go, he touched me, sir, sir, he touched me. Oh, <laughs> I'm dying. Like, come on, man. What are we doing here? You can't point. do it. Braden Maynard, like Lee Matthews short to just punch him in the back of the head next time he sees him. So is that Braden Maynard? <laughs> Bang! There you go. He's done a 360. That was, that was pretty good. cool. Yeah. Uh, stats boy. <laughs> that was a good calm finish. I'm going Brad Scott, old mate, no mates. Uh, still the lesser coach in the family, the lesser brother. He's going to go back to his family uh, dinner. He's got the two brothers. His brother Chris is going, ha ha, I beat you again. I've got two flags. You go to Essendon and you're like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to finally beat my brother in something. He loses again. Poor Brad Scott. I love Brad Scott as a North fan, but old mate, no mates for him. It's a great one. So Thanksgiving in America is a yes. great one for the old we mate, no really mates when that. we do NBA yeah. Australia and NFL Australia mm. uh, because NFL Australia has the very obvious Thanksgiving bowl between the Harbors where you yes. have Jim and yeah. John. Yeah. So John has won a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Jim has now won a college yeah. title after this year with Michigan. There you go. Up until now, like John was always like, ah, what's going on? Oh, gotcha. <laughs> That's Give me your turkey. <laughs> yeah. And just like stealing all the big turkey leg. And I feel like Chris Scott can just keep doing that to yeah. Brad forever. forever. He's he's, Brad Scott's not going to have a flag. Yeah. Get two it's, flags, what, Brad, what, and then you can talk to yeah. him, yeah. mate. Yeah. He, it's like, Brad I'm in. batting first in backyard cricket. Oh, mom, <laughs> Chris said he's batting. He's got two flags, Brad. <laughs> no, I two coaching flags. You. They've got playing flags, but he's got more coaching yes, flags. Exactly. Yes. So yeah. he's like, he's got two flags. Got to let him bat first. <laughs> oh, mom. <laughs> and away we go. Alex, old mate, no mates. Logan McDonald. Oh, poor, poor, poor Swans fan. So one of the key aspects of old mate, no mates as well is when you get on the team bus, I know that you guys, your guys were playing at home this week, but... You get on the team bus and everyone just goes, yeah, this guy. <laughs> ah, yeah. So how's Frio tasting already? Did yeah. that cash check? What do you reckon, Logan? Yeah. Yeah. So for a guy who I've lauded all year about, he has his routine. Yes. He goes back. You like his routine. He does his walk up, his little hip droppy thing, and he kicks the ball and he kicks it straight and he kicks it long. Logan McDonald overthought this whole thing, oh, the poor bastard. He was crapping himself. He was like... <laughs> He was checking with the umpire with the things that he could do That's with, fair enough, with yeah. the arc and everything, which fair enough, you don't want to, if you play it on you, you're an even bigger old mate, yeah, no mates. Side, yeah. But this is where also I feel like someone like a Dane Rampey or an Isaac Keeney should have run over and was like, mate, just relax if you miss. Do you think? It's all good. Logan McDonald, I've watched him play every game of his AFL career. I've seen him kick, uh, it's probably near, near on 100 goals in the AFL. For the first time ever, Logan McDonald, Decided to go on a Lance Franklin-esque arc. Yeah, he did. To kick the football. Check this out. And then it went 50 metres wrong. And he kicked it towards the Bill O'Reilly stand, which is not the way you want it to go. You want it to go to the city end, not towards Coogee Beach. And it was 15 metres short. Yep. Boy, and the rest of it. So, Logan, if you'd just gone back and gone through your normal routine and kicked the drop punt and a fallen shot, I would be like... All right, he he tried. I'd be like, hey, that's cool. The extra aspect, though... Of him arcing for the first time ever. Of him doing it as Frio, the team that's trying to poach him. Oh, yeah. It would have been funny. Hey, isn't that the team that is trying to pay you a lot of money to go play for them next year? Did you just do that? It would have been funnier if it was Chad Warner because Freya have come out and like, yeah, we're kind of not in for Logan anymore. Mm. If it was Chad Warner, it would have been much funnier. Nice. (laughs) Why I can't stand very quickly. (laughs) Footy club. Oh, yeah, the footy club. Oh, footy club. Yes, we get it, Gary Lyon. Every team that is in. Uh, You watch the Swans game. The Aussie rules, like the AFL, right? They are a football club. Yes. What this is is like a uh, – it's a verbal crutch of trying to give yourself enough time to speak yes. before you say your next couple of words. It's your bridging words. It's bridging. The North yes. Melbourne, no, I get that one. There is lots of problems with the North Melbourne Footy Club. You've just said extraneous words for no yeah. reason. Ten words you didn't need to say, yeah. Beyond just going, uh, lots of problems in North Melbourne. Yeah. 
or north. <laughs> you north. You can even get it closer. The ruse. <laughs> yep. Off we go. Yeah, ruse. We're shot. making it. We've gotten into uh, rude, four, rude. Four, four letters. Rue bad. Like, two, what are we doing? Words. Bad Rue. <laughs> and it is absolutely brutal oh, no. when you listen to teams being, you know, just relentlessly called this across an entire week and we've got nine games. It's like, yeah, the Sydney footy club, yeah, the Richmond football club, yeah, the Carlton football club. They're a team. We know that they're football clubs. We know yeah, that they're football yeah. clubs. Yeah, I agree we, understand, we understand that there's a lot that goes into a team and it is a club, right? We get that. When it's bat at home, it is such just a radio mm. approach as well. Oh, the North Melbourne footy club, you're just saying extra words. Well, if it's like Carlton who brand themselves as CFC, Carlton Football Club, I get it, but I don't think the Swans no brand themselves as the Sydney exactly. Swans Football Club. It's ridiculous and it's stupid. On top of that, calls not being at the ground yeah. this week. Was oh, we always so say that. Yeah. I enjoyed how Fox flew Adam Papalia to Melbourne. So Paps was yeah. in Melbourne to call a game that was in Sydney. Yeah, what, what, what the hell is that? What are we doing? Is there a cheaper flight to they Melbourne? Have Rewalt, they have Jack Rewalt on an early game mm. and then on a later game where he's delivering just the same exact amount of zero inside. Amazing <laughs> gear from Jack. Uh, Stats boy, what can't you stand? Oh, I, I can't stand him all the time. Uh, Cody Wayman flopping. He, he, there was a couple of free kicks there, but he got a couple other ones right in front of goal when North was sort of making a comeback. He just flails his arms. You, you touch him on the shoulder and he's trying to flail his arms. He, he's a good player. That's why it annoys me. Dacos does, does this, I noticed, last night too. Yeah, there's a few players that do it. Wayman does it every week. He's he's not as bad as Ginevan, but he just gets on my nerves and because it was against North, I can't can't stand it. Alex? Oh, you know, this ground is so much smaller. <laughs> we haven't talked it. about these, the, the, the length of grounds. Dimensions. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you can kick a goal if you just kick like stra- almost straight from the middle. You can yeah. kick a goal. It's so so small. <laughs> friend of the show, Lachlan McCurdy, did a wonderful did, article about the yeah. length of grounds during the week. How the SCG, five metres smaller than the MCG. The SCG, 10 metres shorter than Optus Stadium. So literally five metres each way. Yet Adam Papalia was like, oh, <laughs> you just get it. You kick a goal out of the centre. It's like, I was this close to like just getting on to him. Like, mate, read this article. Like the seriously. SCG 50 is like 30, isn't it? Yeah, well? see, yeah. like that. It's about it's 25. Just, yeah. Yeah. Honestly. It's basically Oz kick rules up at the SCG. <laughs> yeah. So. Guys, like, if you are paid to have a job and paid well to do it, like, maybe do some research, research and yeah. be informed rather yeah. than just go, oh, it's so much shorter. 10 metres. <laughs> like, if it was 25, I'd get it. As soon as they said the dimensions of the SAG, I'm like, oh, I just imagine Alex just punching walls. Yeah, yeah. Just, like, there's holes in the wall. Well, no, the first Bang. couple of times I'm all right, but when it was, like, the third quarter and they're still mentioning it, it's like... And no one cares really about the dimensions of the ground. 10 metres. Yeah. Nice. Very weird. Oh. Righto. Supercoach wash from the week. Uh, lots of sort of underperforming uh, primos across mm, the board. It was. Uh, obviously, all the Sydney folks had a little bit of a shocker. Maximus Gornicus only had the 79. Mm. Uh, he had Zach Fisher subbed uh, when he was absolutely smashing it. Yeah, he looked a bit sore. Which Charlie Kerner, a lot of people brought him in, had a very quiet day against Richmond. Dacos is pretty handy. Uh, none of the Essendon dudes seemed to fire. Zeret was a Barry Crocker yeah. shocker as well. Uh, Jeremy McGovern, 132. Not bad. I'll tell you that, yeah. Not bad Bond at all. Bond was awesome, 157. Yeah. Uh, Bond just out there just going, hey, check this out. I'm still the Bond. And you're like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Sam Brucey. Walsh, 148. Blakey. Yeah. 148. Brucey Revel, just a sneaky 95 out of nowhere. <laughs> so I'm happy with that. And P. Cripps, three votes, 144. Jordan Sweet, 105, playing ruck against Rowan Marshall, which is great yeah. for me to – I can cut, more, get rid of him. Did you still have Sweet? That's well, yeah, because the the trades I'd had to make, I couldn't trade Sweet, so I had to trade one of my forwards and defenders for oh, yeah, uh, yeah. DPPs. So Jack Sinclair has been shredding as well. He had another 143 this week. He's a defensive mid as well, just saying. So yeah, he's been really. He's going to get James Jordan next week. There's lots James of Jordan stuff going on yeah. in Supercoach, so you better get around the uh, Supercoach shows this week. Yes. Because I think that'll do it for the Round 16 wrap show of AFL Today. You can find more AFL Today on Wednesday when we're yeah. back with the Midweek Madness show. But that is a wicked, massive round of footy. Chaos up and down the schedule. Yeah. Apart from when the Blues smashed the Tigers. Uh, thank you to Alex. Cheers, Jim. And to the Stats Boy. Thank you. Uh, remember to smash a like across all the socials. See AFL Today doing lots of fun stuff. Uh, Facey, IG, X, Threads, TikTok, YouTube, all the good stuff right there. Uh, we have power rankings. Stats was going to do his short kings. All yes, Australia. I can get into that, that yes. this week. I will. I, I don't will. know what he's doing. He's yeah. talking about dropping the ball. Power Jeez. rankings will be out tomorrow. Like Definitely. Uh, get around the Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, a absolutely flying NBA Australia at the moment. We've got free agency popping off as well. Hold all tickets with all your GGs. One on episode them. left for the rest of the season. There you go. Mm, nice. uh, get around all of them. Like 
Scott Wine getting around a very nice pair of hair coolers, I reckon. I was just going to say some his, gloves. On his, on his way to a Brownlow. How nice. good was it when Ruckman could win Brownlow? How good was it when you could win a Brownlow with 19 votes? Love that. Mm. Anyway, that's it. We'll catch you later this week on Wednesday for more AFL Today. Until then, look after yourselves and remember, footy's back. P. Cripps, three votes. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.